BWI Daily Edition is on the road live at Beaver Stadium. Well, live as we're recording here, it is very exciting to be back in person for spring practice. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. We have Greg Pickle, our reporter, Nate Bauer, senior editor here to talk about what we heard from James Franklin at the opening press conference of spring football. So, Nate, you and I talked about uh, on the live show, I think it was last week, you wanted to know what the vibe for spring football was. Did. did you get your answer today? Yeah, I mean, it sounds a little bit silly, but uh, just generally speaking, I think there's confidence. I think there's, there's optimism coming off of what was like undeniably a disappointing season last year. And so just James Franklin and the way that he carries himself in general is is with that confidence. But you never know. Right. I mean, you just you, ne you never know how people are going to be impacted when they have a tough season or in this case, a couple of tough seasons in a row. And basically same old same old right i mean that that was generally the impression that i got was he is carrying himself uh with this optimism that they have the pieces in place with their staff with the personnel uh in the, on the roster to be able to compete and have a good spring this year so that confidence coming off of those two back-to-back -back poor seasons he did mention he holding everyone to the same standard and that it's his job to hold himself to that standard as well greg do you, do you think that that approach is the right one i don't I, you know it is the one that they've had this entire time right. at penn state but uh, I guess the lack of urgency might be the, the thing of, of fans are feeling very impatient about the last two seasons. Right. Do you think that consistent approach is the right one? And, and how do you read kind of James Franklin today? Yeah, this is something you guys have talked about. We have talked about. I know Penn State fans have talked about. I don't think you can ever claim James Franklin doesn't have a sense of urgency. I know that's an easy thing for Penn State fans, Penn State haters, whatever, to pick at and say that, well, he doesn't scream at anyone. Well, he doesn't get angry. Well, he doesn't have this, like, intense emotion behind a microphone but if as we're going to see later today uh or by the time you watch this we'll probably already have seen it but at practice he's pretty ferocious he's pretty energetic he knows what needs to happen he has a new contract now he's added a bunch of staff members off field to kind of build this army of people in analyst roles just like every other major program has he knows what's at stake it's no secret and so i think that yeah it is the right approach it's the one that they've taken since he's been here see it's one it's same when he took at vanderbilt that led that place to places it's never been before and hasn't been since so, yeah, I do think they're on the right track here. I want to stick with you about the offensive line because that came up and it was something that, I mean, he gave us the whole depth chart right. uh, on, on the offensive line. What is your assessment of his comments about the, the run game specifically? That was obviously a focus of today's press conference with a couple of questions about players and about the scheme. And he evaluated Mike Yersich as far as what happened in 2021. So what was your read on the offensive line in the run game today? Yeah, I mean, I think, look, they can talk about committing to it all they want. They can talk about putting resources into it and trying to fix it. And that's great. But until we see it in West Lafayette and then here on September 10th, you know, it sounds, everything sounds good, but they have to go out and do it, right? So, I mean, I think the biggest thing to me, guys, is that, you know, everyone wants Caden Wallace to be a guard. Breaker, shocking, he, he's going to stay at right tackle. So let's just get that out of the way now. Um, you know, and other than that, things were as, you know, Nate, I think, made a good point before we started taping here. The one thing that I think caught all of our ears is that he said Sal Warmly would be the first team guy at right guard. We assume he's going to be able to be at least somewhat healthy for spring practice. But at this point, just like with Adisa Isaac, I'd be surprised if he gets a full workload. Guys, they don't have a lot of numbers on that offensive line. That's why. They, who, do, who do they move over? Yeah, they moved a walk on over Alex Fermanek from defensive tackle to offensive line. If you look and if you read Nate's position reviews over at Boyd Illustrated, you'll see that there's a few position groups where they are just really super light on numbers. Safety is another one. So they got some reinforcements coming. Linebackers one too. But, yeah, they have some things to figure out for spring practice, no question. But, yeah, I mean, in terms of the offensive line, pretty much as you would expect. But, again, we've sat here, it's, you know, hundreds of people have stood on this turf and did this video after a spring news conference since 2014 about the offensive line being better. I, we just need to see it to believe it. Nobody's done the video this good, though, on the field after spring presser, so let's be clear with that. Quarterback obviously came up. Of course, quarterback is going to be a central figure and a central point in uh, spring practice, and James Franklin addressed it, the, the, the chomping at the bit for Drew Aller to come on the football field and play. Uh, what was your view of how he phrased the response when asked about the pressure on Sean Clifford, who I think the assertion was that he has never really had anyone to push him because of, you know, some of the things James Franklin got into. It, it, do you think that's a, a fair way to say that? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it was it, it's complicated, right? Because Will Levis was here and took Sean Clifford's job during a season. So that, that was a factor. That was a thing that exists. Um, but, you know, Ben Jones is the one, and credit to him for asking the question the way that he did. You know, just kind of about how, how do you approach this uh, ecosystem, right, where you're going to have fans reacting to the first misstep that, that Sean Clifford has. And let's be honest here. <laughs> Sean Clifford is flawed as a quarterback. We we know this. Like we 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 have talked about this ad nauseum, um, and and James Franklin acknowledges that, understands that, and is not going to try to fight against. That's what he said. Is he's not going to try to fight this external conversation that's going to happen, where the the immediate impulse is to, regardless of seeing anything from Drew Aller, right, <laughs> regardless of seeing more than a game or two from Christian Veiu, this impulse is going to be you have to replace Sean Clifford. And, you know, I think, I mean, he, my perception and, and my, um, you know, kind of take on what he said is they're not going to they're not going to entertain that. They're, they're not going to have that conversation internally. The conversation internally is going to be who is performing. Who, who who is playing well in practices? Uh, who's preparing the right way? Who who is doing all of those different things that have to happen at that position? And his expectation, as James Franklin said, is for Christian Bayou with a year under his belt to provide some of that competition uh, for Bo Perbula and for Drew Aller to to be able to like those are the things that they can do because they have that. Um, they have that capability. That's why they brought them to Penn State. But at the same time, there's this this opposite side of the equation that is that they're, they're not going to be swayed against Sean Clifford or, or change their own perceptions of John, uh, of Sean Clifford based on what people outside of the program are saying about the situation. And some of those freshmen, I think it was it was you that said, uh, really downplayed the freshmen today and, and probably intentionally because there are a lot of guys coming in with a lot of hype so far from their recruiting process. Uh, one note before I get to you about that is that uh, he mentioned Abdul Carter, one of the few that he did talk about kind of in a real sense of, of maybe not playing time because he's not here right now, but seeing what he looks like at Mike Linebacker uh, is Abdul Carter at that position. A little surprised by that because, you know, just from my analysis and the way he looks and the way he plays – He's classically a will for Penn State. So when it comes to the freshmen and it comes to the way James Franklin talked about Zane Durant and all the other guys, Nick Singleton that are on campus, what was your read of how he uh, handled those questions about one of the best classes he's brought to Penn State? So how was your, how was your view of how he used that and, and how he said that? Yeah, I think with Abdul Carter, it goes back to what we talked about a few minutes ago. And it, there's so uh, few numbers at linebacker that it, they need him to play like the way James Franklin is talking about because they don't have any other choice. And so I think that – I mean, he's a good player. We all know this. And we thought that he could contribute. But the way that he talked about him is like, hey, newsflash, buddy. You better be ready. We better be doing everything you need to do to get up here and play because we're going to need you maybe in the two or three deeper on special teams. So then he knows Dane Durant. Obviously, I don't think the hype train slowed down to any there, guys. Uh, and with the running back, same thing. I mean, you know, there's a little bit of deep recruitment going on before these guys first spring practice. And just a reminder that, hey, you're no longer a four-star. You're no longer the nation's number one running back. You are Penn State number whatever uh, freshman you want to pick. So, you know, that's what they are at this point. They're uh, a guy that needs to earn his spot just like they earned the stars and rankings they had in high school. So, yeah, I don't think there was anything out of the norm there. We don't usually hear coaches just sing the praises of first-year players before they even uh, get a chance to get on the field. Uh, but one guy that's, that's not quite the same case for is Mitchell Tinsley, who uh, he had very high praise for, I think, even before seeing him in a Penn State uniform on the field, the uh, transfer from Western Kentucky. Yeah, uh, you sounded like you had something to say. Uh, well, I just, I heard, I heard you in the in my ear. Uh, what do you got? The the vision of seeing a uh, singleton written in tape. Uh, <laughs> it, I, I just cannot wait uh, yeah. to to see that. Right, singleton, Aller, as though you don't know who these guys are. But you know, just to get their feet wet. I think it's uh, that's the, the the common case. Yeah, absolutely. And and they put the 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 jerseys were out on on Twitter the other day too. So they're releasing like you know these are the the. Uh, players' numbers, and I think that's part of the whole now marketing campaign where you can buy jerseys. Uh, the last thing I have was James Franklin gave, a, I, I thought, a really detailed 
answer about Jonathan Sutherland and not just moving him to linebacker, but the thought of moving him to linebacker in Manny Diaz's system, which over the last couple of years, I, I know we talked about this. I talked about it all week at BlueWhiteIllustrated.com, which is a great reason to sign up for just a dollar. Just because we're out here doesn't mean I didn't forget about that. Sign up for just $1. You get 12 months of access. You get this inside information. You'd have already had all this information. Uh, you just hear James Franklin say it today about uh, Manny Diaz runs a essentially a three safety system and Jonathan Sutherland moving to what used to be the third linebacker position. James Franklin talked about this is the defense they ran at Vanderbilt. This is kind of a new age cutting sort of three safety, big nickel defense that uh, when they got to Penn State, able to recruit more linebackers, play at a high level with some guys out there in space. But in this situation, I think it goes back to what we talked about with Abdul Carter is you've condensed the number of linebackers you need so you can deploy your resources differently than you would if you had to fill out all three positions. So Carter might have started out at the Sam position, but this year he can come in and train at either of those box linebacker positions. And when it comes to the safety position of playing down in that uh, underneath coverage, it's kind of which side of the coin are you looking at, Nate? It's, it's, it's about... Is it a safety with linebacker skills or a linebacker with safety skills? And I know Penn State fans, because he James Franklin mentioned this is LBU, Penn State fans are going to be a little bit nervous about that. So uh, do either of you have a thought on, on kind of switching to a smaller, lighter defense and playing that way? And is there reservations that either of you have about that? Nate, you you have something to say? Well, no, I mean, I just I just think that he he's acknowledging that there aren't enough like designations on a roster, right? Like right. they they not so many, but there's always five to ten players who are positionless, right? Like they they just hybrid some things that they have plans. They for. have defensive tackles that are lighter than their defensive ends. So yes, there's a lot of hybrid players on this defense. Right. So I mean, so that's that's the the general idea is. He, he explained what it is and, and, in fact, said that he needed to have a conversation with the SID to, to figure out how exactly they want to designate John Sutherland. But y you generally have an idea of what he wants from John Sutherland based on the example that he gave of Marcus Allen, right, he, uh, and, and how his career kind of progressed uh, and what they see as John Sutherland's best assets, right? It's not, it's not about, like, is he practicing with the safeties? Is he practicing with the linebackers? It's how do they want to utilize him? How do they want him uh, to, to, to be at his strongest and to help the team at its strongest? And their argument is that John Sutherland being on the field makes the defense as strong as it can be. Yep, and especially at that position where that that third linebacker position, there isn't a guy that, at, at, at least as we've seen, and as James Franklin has talked about, that is ready to step on the field and be that guy that trains to then transition over into that box position. Uh, so that's it for me, guys. Do you have anything else that came up today that you were looking at? All right, so that'll do it today for the BWI Daily Edition. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. Don't miss tonight's show, because this guy is coming back. you got to drive pretty long way, so you're going to be missing tonight's show. But BWI Live coming to you at 8.30 tonight on YouTube. We'll get in-depth into more of what we saw from James Franklin today, some of the things we didn't talk about, and of course, what we see at practice. We'll have those highlights for you later on the day on YouTube. YouTube as well. Subscribe to Blue White Illustrated and wherever you get your podcasts. I'm your host, Thomas Frank Carr. We will talk to you later tonight.